everyone, how are you doing? It's Sunday, May 3, and we've been let out where we are. And so we were able to go see our friends on the mountain today, and so it was nice to get back to something normalized. Um, today I'm going to read you another story from my Bible friends. This is volume 4. And today I'm going to read you uh, Joash the Boy King. Now, um, probably a month ago I was supposed to teach about Joash, but since we quit having church um, back in um, March, um, I wasn't able to teach on Joash. And it helps when I study um, about what I'm supposed to teach on. It helps me to know more about the Bible as well as teaching the kids. And so this is about Joash the boy king, and it's based on 2 Kings 11 and 12, and 2 Chronicles 22-24. Now something you got to know about Joash, there's a couple of kings that um, were real young when they started, and Joash is the first one we run into. And his story isn't as picture perfect as the story I'm going to read to you, but I'll let you in on the end, when I get to the end, I'll let you know... Um, the rest of it. Now what happened was Joash's father, well his grandfather, was married to this woman called Athaliah. Remember Ahab and Jezebel? Um, Ahab probably would have been an okay guy, um, probably not as good as um, God wanted him to be, but because he married Jezebel, um, she was a wicked, wicked queen and she came up with a lot of schemes. One of them was to um, stone Naboth because uh, Ahab wanted his vineyard, remember? But he wouldn't sell it. It was his family's uh, inheritance. And um, remember I was telling you in that previous video about Leviticus. If you read some of that, um, there was laws where God said, do not sell your inheritance. And so Naboth was following the law. But um, the king didn't care. He just wanted the vineyard. So Je Jezebel um, caused him to be stoned. She said she ha set his name on high and the people um, accused him and he was stoned to death. <laughs> that means um, you go out, of town, they drag you out of town and they throw rocks at you, like really big rocks that will hurt you, um, kill you. And several people were killed that way in the Bible. And that was that was one of them. Well, um, Jezebel had a daughter, Athaliah, and she married a king in Judah. Now, the the king, remember, um, if you remember in the Bible, um, how um, the kingdom was won, and Saul was the first king, and then David, and then Solomon, and then mostly through Solomon's reign, the kingdom was divided. And so you got Solomon over here at the end of his reign, and you have um, Jor J Jeroboam on the other side. And so the kingdom was divided. So Ahab and Jezebel over here are in Israel, and Jezebel's daughter Athaliah is over here in Judah. So her husband dies, and uh, she helps her son reign. I think his name is Amaziah. And, well, Amaziah dies, and she decides, well, I can't be queen, I can't be ruler over everything with all my relatives, uh, with their, any male relatives, the boys will be um, king. So what she decides to do is she kills all of the male relatives. But, uh, jo Joash is, um, Joash is real, just a baby. And his aunt, she was a good woman, her name was Jehoshaphat. She takes, um, she's actually married to the high priest. And his name, um, we're going to get to him in a minute. His name was Jehoiada. And so what she does is she and, um, and a maid, probably a nurse, it was nursing uh, little Joash, they take him and hide him away. And this is what the story is it's called Joash the Boy King. Don't cry, little Joash, don't cry. Someday you will be king and wear a crown on your head and sit on a golden throne. But if the wicked queen hears you cry, she will send her soldiers to take you away. And then you won't be king and wear a crown on your head and sit on a golden throne. 
Yeah, she's trying to tell him to be quiet. See, he's in the temple, one of the rooms, the little baby in his little basket. And if he cries and the queen hears him, that's the end of him. And she'd already killed the other male, so this was very important. Uncle Jehoiada, who was priest of the temple, and Aunt Jehosheba kept baby Joash in the bedroom of their temple rooms. Joash learned to walk. He learned to talk. The wicked queen did not find him. The boy Joash grew. Each birthday, he stood a little, little taller beside the bedroom doorpost. See, here's um, Jehosheba marking. You know, if you have kids or know somebody that has kids, they like to mark their children's heights as they grow taller. And you can see he's up to the fourth mark here. She's marking him. In the daytime, the door was always barred shut, lest someone in the temple see him and go tell the wicked queen. In the evening, when the people had gone home, the door was unbarred, and Joash could walk with his uncle in the temple court. So you had to be very careful who you trusted back in those days. And here is Jehoiada walking with Joash. One evening, as Joash and Uncle Jehoiada walked together in the temple court, Joash saw a hole in the temple wall. Then he saw another hole, and another, Why the temple walls were full of holes. The holes were made by the wicked queen's sons when they tore away parts of the wall to build a temple for their idol, said Uncle Jehoiada. To repair the holes would cost much money, and there is no money in the temple treasury. See, what had happened, um, Solomon had a beautiful temple, and it was covered in gold. Well, when the um, kings that followed after him uh, didn't obey God, God allowed um, other other kings and armies to come along and they came and ransacked the temple and they peeled off the gold and they you can see they're down to the stones here as big a hole it's like they have tar paper over the over the um, bricks and there's a hole in the brick and so Joe Ash is wondering what's going on there Uncle Jehoiada taught Joe Ash to read the law of God Joe Ash read thou shalt have no other gods before me Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not steal. Joash loved to read the law of God. He loved God. And that's um, part of the Ten Commandments. Jehoiada's reading to him. And uh, so he was learning the Ten Commandments. That was um, pretty much the only Bible they had because he's in the Old Testament and they were living the Old Testament. Then came the day that Joash was seven. Uncle Jehoiada took him by the hand and led him out onto the temple porch and stood beside stood him beside the bronze pillar. Below the porch to one side were singers and on the other side trumpeters with silver trumpets. So you got the singers on this side. Yeah, Jehoiada here, here's Joash. There's a big bronze pillar right in the middle of the page, and you have the trumpeters on this side. Um, you can see they've got their trumpets. And there's guards all the way around to um, protect um, Joash. Rows of soldiers with spears guarded the porch. Many people were in the temple court. Quietly, they watched and waited. That's all this other... This is all people on the other side. Uncle Jehoiada placed the scroll of the law in Joash's hand and the king's crown upon his head. Then, with a horn of sweet-smelling oil, he anointed Joash king of Judah. The trumpeters blew their trumpets. The singers sang songs of praise. The people clapped their hands and shouted, God save the king! God save the king! Here he's being crowned. He's got the scroll in his hand. You see the trumpeters are blowing their trumpets. On the other side, the people were singing, and everybody's all excited. This is a good day. See, not everybody was in, in line with the, the wicked queen. The wicked queen came running into the temple court. She had heard the trumpets and the singing. When she saw the boy king standing beside the pillar, she tore her clothes and shouted, Treason! Treason! She commanded the soldiers to take the boy away, but the soldiers took her away instead. See, there she is. She's angry. There's that bronze pillar, Jehoiada and Joash. He's only seven years old. Can you imagine becoming king when you're seven? 
here's all the people they're all excited the soldiers are going to get Queen Athaliah the people lined up in a long procession soldiers singers and priests the trumpeters led the way out of the temple gate and down the street to the king's palace they carried the boy king Joash this palace would now be his home this boy's probably thinking hey look mom he's no older than I am this guy's playing a trumpet here and they're carrying him in a chair he doesn't even have to walk <laughs> slowly Joash climbed up the palace walked up the palace aisle he climbed the steps to the golden throne the throne was very large and his feet did not reach the floor but he sat as straight as a king again the trumpeters blew their trumpets the singer sang and the people shouted God save the king God save the king he's just a little boy and he's sitting on this throne meant for uh, an adult and you can see um, the trumpeters out here um, they're blowing their trumpets everybody's excited and here's um, Uncle Jehoiada and he's there to um, take care of him and watch over him because when you're seven years old you don't know quite know how to rule the place can you imagine having a president when you're seven years old or being the president when you're seven years old to be king was a big task for a boy he would need Uncle Jehoiada's help for many years King Joash remembered the holes in the temple wall how could he get the money to mend them he sent men throughout the land to collect coins, but the men spent the coins on their own houses. That's why there was holes there. The holes in the temple walls were still there. Then Joash thought of a different plan to raise money. Yeah, there he is. He's a little bit older now. He can probably, um, his feet can probably touch the floor on the other side of that throne. And there's still these holes in the temple wall, and he's sending people out, and they're not helping out at all. It's Uncle Jehoiada with the scroll. He's always helping Joash. Joash asked Uncle Jehoiada for a chest with a lid. Let us put the chest beside the temple gate, he said. The chest was placed beside the gate. Let us cut a hole in the lid, said Joash. A hole just large enough for coins to go through. The hole was cut in the lid. Now, when people came to the temple to worship, they would see the chest and drop coins through the hole in its lid. So they didn't have an electric screwdriver back then, so he's using a manual one to make a hole in the lid. And here's Joe Ash, and he's watching. You can see people over here. So this is how he's going to collect his money. People came from near and far to see the king's money chest. Boys and girls came. Fathers and mothers, grandfathers and grandmothers. They marched by and dropped coins into the chest. At first, the coins made a clinkety clink clink sound. When the chest was half full, filled clankety clank clank. And when it was almost full, just clunk. He's a little boy. Do you think he asked his mom or dad for a coin so he could put in there? Or do you think he raised it himself? This little girl has her dolly. This girl back here has her dolly. It's all kinds of people and they're just filing past. That's better than passing the offering plate during the morning worship, isn't it? It's a lot more fun. Bring the chest to the treasury room, said Joash. In the treasury room, his helpers poured the, poured the coins into bags. The chest was again placed at the temple gate and the coins went clinkety clink clink, clankety clank clank, and then clunk. Again and again the chest was filled and emptied into bags in the treasury until there was money enough to repair the holes in the temple walls. See, he's got Jehoiada here overseeing it. He's growing a little bit of facial hair, hair here. You can see him. And the guys are taking... Probably couldn't... That chest is too heavy to lift up. So they're um, getting handfuls and probably two guys are holding it and they're putting it in there. And you can see they've already got a couple of bags. <laughs> and of course you have a guard watching. Stone cutters cut stones. Carpenters saw boards. Carefully they worked, for this was God's house. At last the holes in the temple walls were repaired. Now many people came to worship in the temple. 
They learned to love God as did Joash their king. God looked down from heaven and was pleased to see the beautiful temple, the worshipping people, and the young king on the golden throne. See, there he is, and he's, he can see he's got a footstool, but he is, his feet can hit the footstool there on the floor. And he can watch the people in the temple. Isn't that beautiful? The two, looks like two bronze pillars and a bronze basin out front. And um, he was able to watch them come to the temple. A beautiful temple they finally repaired. And that's the end of that story. But that is not the end of his story. See, Jehoiada was his help, was his mentor, I guess you could call him all the way through um, Joash's life until he died. Uh, Jehoiada had a son, his name was Zechariah. Now there's a book of the Bible named Zechariah, but I don't believe it's the same guy. Anyway, um, once Jehoiada died, Zechariah um, took, up, took up the torch, so to speak, and he was able to um, tell Joash some things. Now, when Jehoiada died, before Jehoiada died, Joash would only listen to Zachar to um, Joash would only listen to Jehoiada before Jehoiada died. Getting tongue tied here. Now, when Jehoiada died, um, young princes came along. This is probably what happened a lot. Um, uh, people that he grew up with, and they said, "Well, let's do things different." Well, when he agreed, it wasn't what God wanted them to do. And so he decided to do go with his friends, go along with it. And what happened was, it wasn't the way God wanted. He wasn't following God's way anymore. And Zechariah came along and he said, you know, I don't know exact what his exact words were, but he said, you know, you're not doing what, what my dad said that you should, you know, he was following God. And Joash was real mad. He didn't like what Zechariah was saying. So you know what he did? He had him stoned to death. And although people wanted things to be a little bit different than he had been running them, when they, he did that, they were very angry. And some, uh, some armies came. And they came and probably ransacked that beautiful temple that he had just had fixed. And he was injured in this battle, and he was laying in his bed recuperating, and two of his, um, two of his servants came, and they killed him in his bed, because he had, they were upset because he'd had Zachariah killed. And that was very sad. I love these stories, but they don't always tell the whole story, and although Joash started out really good, he didn't finish strong, and, and that is what is sad. You need to start out strong, you need to finish strong, and God can always help you if you have any questions. Um, his answers are always there in the Bible. You can always look if you have any questions. I love to read the Psalms. They're very encouraging. Um, I might share my favorite Psalm with you sometime. And um, it's just, there's always answers if you need help. And so... Um, I hope you're all having a good day and that you're blessed by by these videos and these stories and I'm sharing with you and that um, everything's going all right with you and I hope um, that you are staying safe and are able to finally maybe get out and see some people, maybe your friends. but just want you to be safe and so anyway bye